My name is Wayne Thorpe. I'm going to be giving a, a broad overview of Stock Investor Pro, uh, AAII's fundamental stock screening and research database program. So it is a Windows only application. You can run it on a Mac system if you're using an emulator product such as Boot Camp or Parallels uh, or something of that nature, but you would need to install Windows on it. So just to give you an overview of what I'll be talking about today is I'm going to start out by giving you an overview of Stock Investor Pro. Again, broad strokes, what it can do, how it benefits individual investors. Then I'm going to pr proceed on and talk about some key program features and functionality. Uh, again, geared towards someone who's thinking about using the product uh, or is a relatively new subscriber. And then finally, I'm going to wrap up with some user resources that uh, myself and Joe Lan have been working very hard to develop a, a very solid collection of user resources. Uh, we have a dedicated Wikipedia, a wiki page for Stock Investor Pro, which is a dedicated how-to website on how to use the product. Uh, every month, Joe actually produces uh, a video tutorial that coincides with our Stock Investor News uh, publication. That is a user benefit to Stock Investor Pro subscribers that uh, you'll have a video tutorial that outlines uh, some aspect uh, of the program. So that's how I'm going to end up uh, my discussion today, talking about some user resources. So what is Stock Investor Pro? That Stock Investor Pro is the most robust investment analysis program I've ever used. It is a fundamental stock screening and research database program. So it allows you to either use predefined stock screens that are built into the software or create your own. It is also, in my mind, the most robust self-contained stock research database you can get out there. You have a database of over 7,000 companies, U.S. traded companies, New York Stock Exchange, Amex, NASDAQ, uh, OTC bulletin board stocks, ADRs, etc., you get seven years of annual financial statement information, eight quarters of financial statement information, as well as seven years of price multiples, ratios, price valuations, earnings estimates for the current fiscal quarter, next fiscal quarter, current fiscal year, next fiscal year, and the fiscal year after that, as well as trends, both revisions up, revisions down, as well as trends in the overall consensus market uh, estimate. And then on top of all of that data you receive, you can also take any of the numerical values in the product and create your own custom fields that then you can also use for screening. So this is a product that really can do, if, if, you're, if you're a do-it-yourself or stock investor, this is a product that you probably should be very serious about looking at. You also get updates via the internet on a weekly basis, so it's also a timely database. We don't offer daily updates, mainly because as a fundamental database, yes, things such as PE, price to book, and whatnot can be changing on a daily basis as prices change. This is also a fundamental product, so fundamental investors tend to be a little more longer term. So as a fundamental investor, I'm not concerned with day-to-day -day fluctuations in PE, price to book, or things like that. What else can stock investor do for you? Well, in my 17 years at the association, one of the things that I've been responsible for in one way, shape, or form is our stock screens. Uh, I write the annual review uh, of stock screens in the AI journal, and actually I'm turning that mantle over to, to Joe this year, so I no longer will be doing that. But I've been, for years, I was responsible for doing, running all of the stock screens that get the results that get posted to the website and whatnot. And what I've found doing all of that is stock screening is a fabulous way to organize your investment approach. Again, instead of read, trying to find stock ideas by reading headlines in Money Magazine or the Wall Street Journal or, heaven forbid, listening to Jim Cramer, <laughs> you can use this product, especially if it's a methodology that, and we track all of these methodologies, you have an idea to look to see how these methodologies have performed over varying market conditions, you find a methodology that you believe in, and you allow that to dictate your investment philosophy. In effect, stock screening eliminates emotions from the investment process. We are all emotional beings, and sometimes our emotions can get the best of us, and the worst times you want to be making investment decisions is when you're being ruled by your emotions. And so I think really 
this probably the other biggest benefit of using a product like Stock Investor Pro is it organizes your investment methodology and it removes emotion from the process to allow you to make more intelligent, educated investment decisions. And finally, because AAII at its heart is an investment education association, Stock Investor Pro serves to educate individual investors. We offer over 60 stock screens in the program, but we just don't throw these at you. In our help system, at the website, at the Stock Investor Wiki page, we have all of the articles that accompany these different stock screening methodologies. So you can read them to understand exactly why these certain parameters are being used in these different screens. So again, you can learn about the investment process, but above and beyond that, by reading these articles and analyzing these different stock screens that we've been tracking now since the beginning of 1998, you can see the types of screens and the underlying parameters of those screens that have performed the best or the worst since 1998. And by doing that then, if you are someone that's looking to create your own stock screens, you can see, well, okay, these are the parameters that seem to underlie successful stock screens. And so you can use that knowledge to create more intelligent and hopefully more profitable stock screens on your own. So now sort of getting into and, and talking specifically about the product, you can go to the Stock Investor Pro area of the website and download this full program and data installation file. This file serves two purposes. A, if it's the first time you're ever installing the product, this is where you go. But because computers can be cantankerous sometimes, files get corrupted, hard drives crash, things like that, there may be a time that you need to reinstall the product instead of having to contact us to send you a CD or anything like that. Again, you can come back to this and download it and install the program. The first time you open the product, the program after you install it, you're prompted to enter in a username and a password that then is used for the automatic update process. It's very simple. If you go to our website, whatever login, username, and password you use to access the AI website, whether it be a customized username and password that you've created, or if you haven't, then it would just be your 10-digit member number for both the username and password. That's the information you enter in. Then, after you've done that, Although you do have the option too, because there's some people, especially if you're in an office and if you're behind a firewall, sometimes that will wreak a little havoc, or you're just, you don't want to be, because every time you open the pro program, it'll do a little churn in the background for a few seconds as it's looking for new data, and if it doesn't, then it'll open the product. But if you don't want to go through that every time, you can also disable the automatic updates. But after you've entered that information in, subsequent times when you open the program, the program will look at the data you have on your system and then communicate with download servers that we have through Amazon. And if it finds that the data you have on your system is older than the data that's the newest data that's available in our update servers, you'll get this little notification saying, okay, this is the weekly data and monthly data you have installed, but we have newer, actually in this case, month, weekly and month end data. Would you like to install that? And you have the option of either do I want to install the latest weekly or the latest month end. Uh, the biggest difference being some people want to use the month end data because that is the data that we use to run our stock screens. So you, we have that option. But if you have this, then you just specify which one you want. You click update. And depending on your internet speed, probably within at, at most maybe a couple of minutes, it'll download the update and actually automatically up, install the up, update and then launch the product and you'll have the latest data that'll serve you until the next data update. You also, within the program itself, if you go to the update stock investor area menu here, you can check for updates. So if you were to click on that, it'll be the same process when you first open the program. It'll look at the data you have on your system, compare that to what's on our update servers. If it finds new data, it would say new data is available, shut the program down and restart it or it'll tell you that Stock Investor is up to date and you're good to go. Now, because we've perhaps, for lack of a better term, trained our users very well, Stock Investor data is normally updated by noon central time every Saturday. Occasionally, either there's a delay in receiving the data for Thomson Reuters or because
computers are involved. Every once in a while, there may be some technical glitch on our end that delays the updating of this data. We have two means of communicating to our subscribers that there's a delay with the data or to let them know that the new weekly and month end data is posted. We have a Twitter feed, which is AAII underscore SI Pro that you can subscribe to. Or if you use RSS feeds, you can go to www.aai.com forward slash RSS and subscribe to the Stock Investor Pro data updates RSS feed. And so every Saturday, once those data updates are available, we'll tweet the fact that the weekly data is available or we'll post to the RSS feed that same fact. Likewise, if there's a delay, we will communicate it that way. And ideally, we will provide some time frame as to how long we think the delay may be. Sometimes they'll say, we don't know at this time, the data is being delayed, but we will definitely follow up. So this, these two, uh, Twitter and the RSS feed are two ways in which you can be, stay informed of, as to the status of the weekly and month end data updates. So now really getting to the heart of the matter and talking about navigating the product itself. When you first open the program, you are confronted what is called stock notebook number one entitled. Everything you do within Stock Investor revolves around this stock notebook. And by default, when you open it, there are a few things actually by default. First off, a stock notebook is made up of 11 different tabs, but by default, you end up on this view tab first. Secondly, by and large, and this could change, and I'll talk about this a little bit later, but typically if you've not made any changes to the default stock notebook, when you open the program, you're also confronted with the full database of companies. In this case, it's roughly 7,200 companies at this point in time. Also, the stock notebook is ranked by company name ascending. Now, inevitably, this question will come up. People will be like, okay, we have company names are repeated twice. This, if you're a programmer, you probably would understand. This is a legacy programming quirk, for lack of a better term, with the program. It doesn't mean there's nothing wrong with the program. If you see, you actually have two sets of scroll bars here, and actually this divider bar you can adjust. So it actually, if you are truly into the program, you can adjust this so it makes better sense as to why there's these two are repeated here. But there's no flaw when you see the fact that you have the double company names here. Also, you see that when you first open the notebook, you have the very first company is highlighted in yellow. That is the active company in the stock notebook. That means the view tab is unique in that it will display all of the active companies within the, stock, within the database. Now, the active set of companies in this case is all of the companies in the database. But as you apply a portfolio or a stock screen, the, res the companies in that portfolio or the results of the stock screen that you run become the active set of companies. But in this case, 1-800-Flowers is our active company. And then that means then these individual tabs we have, the overview tab, the multiple tabs, growth tabs, et cetera, those tabs display the data for a singular company. And it's the company, the active company, or the company highlighted in yellow. So in this case, if we'd gone to the overview tab, or the ratios tab, or the estimates tab, the data on those individual tabs would have been, would be for 1-800-Flowers. The stock notebook, in effect, is a template. And it is a template that involves or is created from a portfolio, a screen, a view, and a ranking order. By default, the default notebook in Stock Investor Pro has no portfolio, no screen, the default standard view applied, and the, ranked da the, the database ranked by company name ascending, so alphabetical order. But, and this is something that people don't necessarily understand, something that I use a lot, a more advanced user of the product, a lot of, especially a lot of users, myself included, there may be a particular stock screen that you follow a lot. There may be a specific set of data fields that you look at a lot. They, the, the, you might have a core set of data fields that you use when you're analyzing a company. Uh, there could be a certain ranking. You know, I don't want it alphabet. I don't want it done by alphabetically. I want it ranked by price change the la over the last month, something like that. You can specify these different things and cr set those parameters and make that the default stock notebook. Therefore, every time you open the program, 
instead of having to individually select a portfolio and or a stock screen and or a view and or a rank order, by setting up a specific screen, in this case, I've specified the John Neff screen, which is built into the product, a custom web Neff view that I created that basically contains most of the data points used in the Neff screen, and ranking it by the forward dividend adjusted peg ratio, which is a key element of the Neff screen in ascending order, by setting all these different parameters and setting these parameters as being the default notebook, every time I open the program after that, the program automatically will load the John Neff screen, load my web Neff view, and rank the database by forward dividend adjusted peg ratio. So it's a somewhat time-saving element, especially, again, if there's a, a particular analysis screen, collection of data points, etc. Now, if for whatever reason, you decide that, okay, I want to revert back to the default notebook being no screen, no portfolio, the standard view, everything ranked alphabetically, you can come back to the file menu and go to set default notebook to standard, and it'll revert it back to those parameters. So when you open the program the next time, it'll be all 7,200 companies ranked in ascending order. Now, as I mentioned, you can rank the database, because inevitably, alphabetical may look good, but from an analytical standpoint, it really doesn't mean much. So there'll be times, typically after you've run a stock screen or if you've loaded a portfolio, they'll, you'll want to rank the database on something. And you can rank the database by any of the 2,200 data, numeric data fields available in the product. In order to do that, you go to the Tools menu and select Rank. And that will then bring up the Select a Field to Rank window. Now, this then brings up what we call the field picker. The field picker is probably the most intimidating element of the product for a new user. Seems relatively innocuous. The reason being, and unfortunately this screenshot doesn't capture it, what you're seeing here is a subset of data fields that belong to the multiples data category. But when you first bring up a field picker and they find the field picker in the rank functionality, the view editor, and the uh, screen editor. When you first pull up the field picker, however, you're confronted by all of the data categories that are in the program with little plus signs next to all of them. And for a new user, people have told me, and I, because I was there, I understand it. Let's say you want to rank the database by PE or you want to screen by PE. Well, you have to know that PE belongs to the multiples data category. And again, that's something that just comes to you over time. But in this case, I'm ranking the database by the uh, forward dividend adjusted peg ratio. And that, because I've been using the program so long, is also part of the multiples data category. So although you don't see that here, what I did was when I first opened the field picker, had all the different data categories, one of which was multiples with a little plus sign next to it. I click that, and that expands it out to show you all of the data, the data categories within the multiple, I mean, I'm sorry, all the individual data fields within the multiples data category. And then you, I scroll down to PE to dividend adjusted EPS growth five years. And then you can specify, do I want to rank it in ascending order, which is lowest to highest value, or descending highest to lowest. For those of you familiar with peg ratios, typically a lower peg ratio is preferred to a higher peg ratio. So I'm ranking the, using this particular peg ratio in ascending order. And then that will then rank my active notebook in that order. Now, if a data field that you want to rank upon is in the view that's currently loaded, there's another option that you can follow for ranking the database, which is actually much easier because you don't have to worry about going into any of the menus. Now, in this example, I've loaded the John Neff screen, and I'm using this web Neff view that I, again, had created myself. So we have 11 companies that were passing the screen as of November 1st, and the select grouping of data fields that pertain to the Neff screen that's built into the software. Now, in this example, I, again, want to rank it by the PE to dividend adjusted peg ratio, which is, although it's covered up a little bit, is one of the data fields in this view. And unfortunately, the screenshot didn't capture my mouse. But all you would do is take your mouse up to the data column that you want to rank and right-click on it. And then it gives you the option to rank by PE to dividend adjusted peg ratio ascending or descending. You specify it that way, and it ranks it instead of having to go through the tools, rank, and then use that field picker. So now, again, a lot of people use the database to analyze individual companies and you have a multiple 
a number of options when you want to look for an individual stock. A relatively new feature we've added is we added a ticker search right to the tool menu, toolbar of the, of the program. So at the upper right hand corner of the program window, you have a ticker search. Now it is only ticker search, so you have to know what the ticker symbol is. You can't search by company name using this functionality. So in this case, I entered in J-O-Y, type in the ticker symbol, hit enter, and it will take you to the, that company in the stock notebook, and again, highlight it in yellow, making it the active set of companies. Now again, I, earlier I touched on this whole concept of the active database. In this case, the active database is the entire database because again, I've not applied a screen or a portfolio. The ticker search mechanism in the program is always looking, using the active set of companies to search. So let's say I had applied a stock screen, but Joy Global had not passed the screen that I had loaded, or I had loaded a portfolio that did not include Joy Global. If that's the case and I had tried to do a search for Joy Global, it would have said the company is unavailable. So I get a phone call every once in a while from someone saying, Apple or Microsoft isn't in the database. Like, well, it is. Do you have a portfolio or a screen loaded? Oh, so that's, if, if you are looking, especially if it is a, a widely followed stock, um, if you do a ticker search and find you're being told that that company is unavailable, I would first verify that you don't have a portfolio or a screen loaded. That probably 99 out of 100 times, that's what's going on. Now you also, because again, that ticker search the, on the toolbar only allows you to search for uh, ticker. If you don't know the ticker number but know the company name, the other option is to use the find stock issue functionality in the software. Now you load that up by going to edit, find, and it will bring up this find stock issue window where you can either screen by ticker or company name. Now, again, sort of another one of those annoying programming quirks. Everyone has been trained anymore to look for a flashing cursor to let you know that it's time to type. When this window comes up, there will never be a blinking cursor in the find window here. Just start typing. Um, otherwise, you'll stare at it unfortunately, for the rest of your lives. Um, but again, type it in using the ticker symbol or the name. You can hit enter or, tip or click OK. And again, then it would take you to the company that you've typed in, highlight it in yellow. But again, making sure that you don't have a portfolio or a screen loaded. And then lastly, a third option for finding a company is to use, there's a little field glass or binocular icon in the toolbar at the top of the program Clicking that will also take you to the find stock issue window where you can screen by either ticker, find a company by either ticker symbol or company name. Now, as I said during the introduction, in Stock Investor Pro, assuming a company has been trading for at least seven years, you have over 2,200 data points per company. That's a lot of data. <laughs> data that most of us are not going to use all of. The standard view, that's the default view when you first open the program, has, I think, roughly 100 data points, scaled down from about 180 several years ago. Again, 100 data points is a lot of data points for an individual to probably want to look at. So to focus your attention on a specific collection of data, we have what are called views in the program. You can create your own view, because again, most of us have those sort of go-to data points that you use when you're looking at different companies. You can create a view with all of those different data points. But we also have a collection of predefined views in the program that are basically revolve around an individual data category. So like we've lumped together all the balance sheet quarterly items, all the company information items, all of the earnings estimates data items, which is, this is still a lot of data within these. I mean, some of these views probably still have over 100 data fields, but these are the predefined ones. But whenever you load one of these views, then those data points in that particular view are what appear for the companies in the active notebook in the view tab. 
Now, again, because even the predefined views, again, those are typically focusing in on one data category, estimates, growth rates, ratios, multiples, etc. Typically, your analysis is going to be going across multiple data categories. So you can create your own custom views using the view editor. And you open that by going to the tools menu and view editor. And then that opens up the view editor, where you are again confronted by someone would consider the daunting or intimidating field picker. And this is now where you can see here. This is the field picker that I was talking about with the find company window. All of the different data categories in the program with little plus signs next to them. Clicking at any one of these plus signs would then give you in alphabetical order all of the underlying data fields that make up that particular data category. So in this case, this view editor, I've created this web NEF screen uh, view, which again contains most of the data points that you would find in the actual predefined John NEF screen. So you have company name, ticker, exchange, price, PE, uh, the median industry PE, yield, uh, EPS growth estimate, dividend adjusted forward peg, uh, five-year earnings growth rates, uh, and a few others. So you can enter in all these different data fields, and as you enter them in, this is how they appear. This is the order in which they appear. But if you were to click in one of the boxes next to one of these data fields on the right side of the view, you can click on that and then drag these different fields up and down to change the overall view, uh, order of the data fields in that particular view. With Stock Investor 4.0, what we added was this make view functionality in the screen editor. The screen editor is where you can look at the data points of an existing screen, or this is the editor you go into if you want to create your own custom stock screen. In this case, I open up the screen editor, and you do that by going to the tools uh, and screen editor, or there's also the little funnel icon on the, tool on the toolbar. Either one of those options will open up the screen editor. And then within the screen editor, you can select screens that are already built into the software or create your own. In this case, I pulled up the predefined Neff John screen, so the John Neff screen. Doing that then pulls up all of the data points that make up the program. And that's one other thing I want to point out is all of the stock screens that we have in the software, you can go in and see exactly the parameters that we are using for these. This is not a black box system. This isn't even a gray box system. Fully transparent to say, okay, if a, I'm looking at a pass, list of passing companies for the John Neff screen, you know that these are the exact parameters used for that particular screen. So in this case, again, I've pulled up the John Neff screen, and now instead of opening up the view editor and going through and adding P, dividend adjusted peg ratio for the multiples category, EPS growth estimate from the earnings estimate data category, free cash flow per share from the free cash flow data category, which even someone who's well-versed in the program, to try to recreate this view manually would probably take you five minutes or so. Instead, you click this Make View button, and it will take all of the data fields that are entered into this, into this particular screen, open up the view editor, and drop them all in there for you. So again, instead of having to manually recreate this view, if there's a screen, again, a predefined screen or a screen that you've created, you can click that Make View button. But then from there, you don't have to be satisfied with these collection of data points. You can delete from here. You can add more. You can change the order. You can do whatever you want, and then you can save it. Again, all about saving time and focusing your analysis to also save you time. Now, another way in which you can use the view reports is beyond viewing specific data fields in the view on the view tab of the stock notebook, you can print what are called view reports, which at the end of the day are just the companies in the active notebook, again, the entire database, the results of a screen, the companies in a loaded portfolio. 
And then you specify a view, and it'll print those particular data points in the view for the companies in the active notebook. So if you click on the print icon here at the top of the program, that will open what is called the available reports window in the program. These are all of the different reports that are in the software. I doubt very much I'll be able to get through all of them because I want to kick it into a bit of a high gear here. But the view reports, you have company summaries, comprehensive company summaries, but view reports. So in this case, my active notebook are the 11 companies that passed that web NEF screen that I've been using throughout. I want to print a view report, all companies in the active notebook. So it's going to be these 11 companies. And then I come over and specify from all of the views that are built into the, I'm sorry, these are all uh, custom views that I've created. In the program, anything denoted by an asterisk, whether that be a view or a screen, are the predefined ones that come with loaded with the program. But in this case, I'm using my predefined, I mean, my custom web NEF screen. I also then want to print this across by issue, so it's going to be the company is going across with the data fields going down. I then create my view report. So it's going to be a multi-page report because 11 companies aren't going to fit all the way across. But these are the companies then that pass the screen with the data points that were underlying my web NEF view. So one last thing dealing with views is a lot of stock investor users don't even necessarily do much with the program itself. There are some people that actually are very good programmers and don't even ever even open the program. They've created their own extraction methodologies or macros that will just pull the data directly from the database tables without ever opening the program. But other people will run the screens and then export the data into Excel or something like that. Well, another new feature that I added, that was added uh, recently, was it used to be, it's still in there, a somewhat kludgy export process where you had to specify a view, specify how you wanted the data exported, uh, specify where you wanted the export file saved on your system, etc. Not the most elegant of features or functions. Now, instead, you can export, basically copy the contents of the stock notebook to your clipboard that then you can paste into uh, Excel, even a Word document or things like that, but primarily you're probably going to be expect exporting it into Excel. So here, again, my John Neff screen, my John Neff view ranked in ascending order by dividend adjusted forward peg ratio. All you have to do then is right click anywhere in the stock notebook and do copy notebook to clipboard. Depending on how many companies you have in your active notebook, depending on how many data fields that are in there. Uh, so if, for example, if you had all 7,200 companies and were using the standard view with over 100 data points, the copy process would take you probably several minutes. In this case, it took less than two seconds. So once it's been copied, and you'll get a status bar, It'll march across so you can see. I mean, sometimes it'll flash up and disappear because it's very quick. But again, if it's a large set of companies with a number of data fields, you'll get that status bar with the green bar that marches across to let you know the status. But once the copy is complete, then I opened up my Microsoft Excel and just went to cell A1 and did file, paste, and this is what's exported. The only modification, the only uh, uh, formatting that I did was adjust the column widths. Otherwise, it pastes, it copies, plain English, column headings, everything like that. So again, if you're someone that, want, that is going to use the data extensively in a third-party analysis software tool like Excel, this copy-paste function is going to save you a lot of time. Now I'm going to get into some features that, we, that were added for Stock Investor 4.0 that I think really separate the program from some of the other screeners that are out there, which unfortunately, there are not many left. Um, Stock Investor really is the only software-based one that's left. Uh, on the web side, there are many, many services out there offer online stock screening, um, which is in some ways is somewhat insulting to a program like Stock Investor Pro. 
Um, Yahoo Finance has a pretty extensive stock screener, but it's primarily price data oriented. Um, Microsoft, Morningstar's premium stock screener is probably the closest to Stock Investor, but it's more expensive and it still doesn't offer as many data points as you're going to get with Stock Investor Pro. But a new feature added to the program is what we call the multi-screen selector. We had a lot of requests from people saying, you know, I, t I follow a lot of different screens. Is there any way for me to be able to run multiple screens simultaneously? This is where the multi-screen selector grew out of. Here, when you open that by going to, actually it's going to, if you go to the tools menu and, do, and select multi-screen selector, you're presented with all of the available stock screens. Some of these can be predefined, some you've created yourself. You then can start going through and start selecting them. If you wanted to, you could add all of them. Uh, in this case, I selected 11 out of the 60 plus that are in my collection because I have a lot of predefined ones as well. You enter them in. As you enter them in over here onto the screens to be evaluated, it will tell you the number of companies that are passing each of the individual screens as you add them. You then have the ability to either apply and, which basically says, I want to find any stocks that pass all of these stock screens, which in this case is not going to happen with this many, or if any stocks that have passed any of these stock screens. And so in this case, just to show you, I did the apply and, which means it's requiring him to pass all of these. Nothing popped up. Actually, we ran out of companies after it evaluated the first two screens. So this is probably going to be more useful by doing the apply or, but again, you're going to get a whole mass of companies because it's going to be any company that passes any one of the specified screens. So to make the, pro the process a little more meaningful, we took this one step further and created what was called the cross-tab report. Still involves the multi-screen selector, so you still go through and select the different screens that you want evaluated. Again, if you wanted to, you could select all of them. But in this case, you click the cross-tab button here in the multi-screen selector, and here with the cross-tab report, you specify the minimum number of screens a passing company has to meet. Does that make sense? So in this case, I had selected 12 screens for this particular example. And I said, OK, I want to see, do any of the companies in the stock universe pass at least five of these screens? So lowest count of screens to be included in cross-tab, five. You have the ability to either create a paper report or an Excel spreadsheet. If you do create an Excel spreadsheet, then you do have to specify where you want it saved as. And it will also create what is called a key file, which you'll see what that means in just a moment. Once you've specified this information, then you click the OK button. Still involves the multi-screen selector, so you still go through and select the different screens that you want evaluated. Again, if you wanted to, you could select all of them. But in this case, you click the cross-tab button here in the multi-screen selector. And here with the cross-tab report, you specify the minimum number of screens a passing company has to meet. So in this case, I had selected 12 screens for this particular example. And I said, OK, I want to see, do any of the companies in the stock universe pass at least five of these screens? So lowest count of screens to be included in cross-tab, five. You have the ability to either create a paper report or an Excel spreadsheet. If you do create an Excel spreadsheet, then you do have to specify where you want it saved as. And it will also create what is called a key file, which you'll see what that means in just a moment. Once you've specified this information, then you click the OK button, and you have your cross-tab report. Now, in this case, here's the paper version. I did both. Only one company of the 7200 Quest Core Pharmaceuticals met five, at least five, of the 12 screens that I had specified. And actually, in this case, it met exactly five. In the print report, It'll give you little X's next to the, so it'll give you the, the companies that pass your multi-screen and then all of the different screens that you had specified in the cross-tab report. And if there's a little X next to it, it'll tell you the exact stock screens that it passed. You also have, I have actually two spreadsheet files here. The first one in the background is the actual passing companies list. So in this case, we still have QuestCore 
pharmaceuticals, but then you have all of these funky codes here. This is where the second file, the key file, comes into play, which is the plain English descriptor of these codes for the matching screens. So again, the crosstab report is useful in that it allows you to identify stocks that pass a minimum number of multiple screens that you can apply. Now I think we're getting very close to the end, and I do have more to go through. But just to give you an example of some of the other reports you have at your disposal, you have company summary reports, which is a one-page report, a snapshot that gives you selected financial statement data, growth rates, price change data, uh, and earning surprise information. So it's a good one-page report just to give you a brief overview of the company. Comprehensive company reports, where these are customizable reports, where you can go through and specify the different data categories you want added to the report that then, if you specify all of these, would give you probably about a 15-page extensive report uh, on an individual company. Um, you can also print these reports on individual companies or the companies in the active notebook. So if you've run a screen and want to print company summary reports for those, you'd specify to print the report for all of the companies in the active notebook, which would then be the results of your screen. The same with the comprehensive reports. You also have statistical summary reports, which will create summary statistics on a collection of data points for a collection of companies. This is a little more advanced, so I'm not going to get into this too much. You also have sector and industry median reports, which will basically calculate the medium values of a collection of data points for an individual sector or an industry that you specify. But then lastly, I want to wrap things up, especially because a lot of you are going to be new subscribers or are new subscribers. I want to touch on some things that are going to help you immensely getting to learn, getting to know how to use the program. Probably for most users, the first place you're going to end up is going to be the Stock Investor Pro help system. You go to the help menu and collect contents and index, and it'll open up a help window here where you can find step-by-step -step walkthroughs on a variety of elements of the program. I mean, using stock screens, using portfolios, using views. Uh, here, someone had asked earlier about learning more about the screens themselves. In the help system, you have, you can't see it very well, but it's predefined stock screening strategies. If you click on that, it will expand it out to all of the stock screens in the program and underlying that then are articles describing all of the different screens that are in the program. You also have field definitions, which is, again, for the new user, you're going to be spending a lot of time looking at field definitions because this is where you find out where the data categories of an the, which data category an ind individual field lives in. So you specify, you go to the, we'll go back, you can click on the field definitions, and you can even do it alphabetically by individual data field or field definitions by category. If you're looking for the data category, then you're probably going to be, want to be looking things alphabetically. So alphabetically, A to Z. So in this case, I want to find what data category multiples is in. So PE begins with a P. So I come down to P, double-click on that to expand that out to all the data, data fields that begin with P. Select... PE, and then that brings up the field definition, gives you a pretty detailed information on what the PE is, how you can use it. But you have the data table table, which isn't going to be much to you, but what's really going to be important is the data category multiples. So whenever you're looking for PE within the field picker, you know to go to multiples to find it. AAI.com, the stock investor area of AAI.com. This is an area that will be your friend if you are a Stock Investor Pro subscriber. Here you can find video tutorials. On a monthly basis, we publish, post a new video tutorial highlighting some different elements of the program. Uh, Joe Land does these, does a quality job, so you can, get, you can pull up, sit back on your computer, and watch these videos that will outline different aspects of the program. We also have the Stock Investor Pro troubleshooting content area. As much as I would like the program to be 100% error-free, it's still a piece of computer software. Inevitably, you're going to get hit with some type of error message or something like that. Here, 
is where you I would suggest coming first. We've created a whole variety of error sheets that provide step-by-step -step instructions on how to walk you through correcting probably 95% of the errors you're going to get with the software. We also have a pretty extensive FAQs area. Uh, again, I've been using the program for 17 years. I've been frontline tech support for Stock Investor for most of that time. So I've probably heard every single question possibly posed about this question. In that experience, we've created a list of FAQs, the ones that have come in most frequently. So if you have a question about the product, chances are someone else has probably asked it at some point. So I would suggest coming here to the FAQ section to perhaps see if you can't find that answer. Uh, Stock Investor Pro News. That's a member, a subscriber benefit, uh, monthly basis. It accompanies the video tutorials that Joe, Joe Land creates. It's basically the script for the video. So, but it's a printed discussion of some element of the program that you can create a PDF of and print out if you don't want to watch the video. Then also the Stock Investor Wiki. This is a dedicated Stock Investor how-to page where it'll walk you through all of the different elements of the program heavily vested with screenshots and whatnot. This is basically, if you want to sit down and spend time, walk you through the program step by step, I would suggest trying out the Stock Investor Wiki. This is something we don't promote a lot because we've been putting a lot of time and effort into developing it, but we really have built it out significantly over the last few months. But again, this will walk you through basically every single element of the program. So for a new subscriber, this is definitely a place you'd want to start. And then lastly, inevitably, something's going to come up that either our troubleshooting area is not going to be able to handle or anything like that, and then definitely contact us. You can call us, 1-800-428-2244, and ask for technical support. You'll probably get Joe or myself. But probably easily the best way to do it is to reach out to us either using the Stock Investor feedback form or reaching out to us at techsupport at aai.com. I make it a personal mission of mine to try to respond to every email that I get within 24 hours. And that also applies to tech support emails. We have this web-based feedback form that you can go through and specify, provide information for us regarding your user experience, and then you're able to outline exactly what's going on with the program. One thing to keep in mind, if you are using this online feedback form, you need to provide your email address because we're responding to you via email. <laughs> if you don't give us an email address as much as I would love to, I can't get back to you. And whether you're using the feedback form, sending us email, or leaving a voicemail message, if you get an error, the error number and the exact contents of that error is measurably useful to us to be able to diagnose your problem. So as much information you can give us regarding the operating system they're using. Are you using a native Windows system? Are you using a Windows emulator? Again, the contents of any error message that you may receive. As much information as you can provide us is going to make it much easier for us to help you diagnose your problem. And so if you are a, thinking about using the program, first-time subscribers can use the program for 90 days. And if you find that it doesn't meet your needs, for whatever reason, you can get a 100% money-back guarantee. Membership rate, $198 for a one-year new subscriber, $299 for two years. I thank you very much.